so when we go out, a normal vacation for, for somebody, say, we went fishing. Like, people yeah. won't go down to the beach, you know, they get on the boat, they go out, get a lot of fish, come back, cook, have a great For us, we would get there, one of the cars would break down. And then when we're out, the boat would sink or break down, and we were out there 13 hours puttering back on, on one engine with a half a loaf of bread and no water, right? <laughs> and then when you get back in, there's no food left. And it's just every time we go out and one of these stories, these adventures, the next time we get around, we talk about it. Like, hey, man, you remember when that boat sometimes we had to swim back all the time, that hurricane? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just we laugh so hard at our misery that it becomes a blessing to us. So if our bad times are a blessing, imagine how much fun we have during our good ones. Duty, honor, country dictate what you ought to be, what you can be, what you will be. The destiny of man is not measured by material computations. When great forces are on the move in the world, we learn we're spirits, not animals. Now, we are the masters of our fate. Well, guys, I've got Marcus Luttrell here on the podcast, and uh, and sir, it's just a fantastic uh, opportunity to, to speak to you. Really, really an honor. And I want to start out by just thanking you, really, for two different things. Uh, I want to thank you one for your service. I was actually having breakfast with my boys um, yesterday morning. I had to have some work done on my truck, and I was like, "It's a great time. Let's just get away, get some breakfast." And I was thinking about this podcast coming up as most guys, you know, we're always thinking about work and we're thinking about the next things coming up. And I thought, you know, there's some part of my ability, my opportunity to just spend time with my boys, not worried about getting shot, not worried about getting killed. I'm just, you know, we're just having a good time, father and son meal. And I said, I I, I was recognizing my mind just, I owe some part of that, you know, small part, sure, but some part of that is owed to men such as yourself that have put their life on the line and, uh, and have, have just made sacrifices, uh, have put in the hard fight. And I just want to say thank you so much for, uh, for everything that you've done and all that you stand for. No, you bet. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you for letting me do it. I mean, yep. My brother and I always, when people tell us thanks for our service, the first thing out of my mouth is, thanks for letting me do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I had the best time. I, it was the greatest adventure and it was, I mean, it's been an honor just to <laughs> walk among y'all kind of deal. It's, uh, I always wanted to to go that route and to be able to get in there and do the things that we did was truly a blessing and a, and an honor. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And the second part of this is I just want to say thanks for another thing. And that's, you know, as you, you're very well aware of this for the last decade or more, most of the, the media that we've all heard about our military, it's all shifted from hero to you guys are the victims of an unjust war or you guys are the bad guys. And it's men like yourself, you come back home, thank God, and you you begin to say, you know, here's what here's what being a hero kind of looked like when I was in battle, and here's what it looks like at home, and we get a different narrative, we get the real narrative. And so I know you're you're out there, you're you're fighting the good fight still, uh, in in that respect. And uh and so once again, just thanks for, for what you're doing here back at home. And that's really what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, just kind of like what the mission is now, what the mission is today. You got a lot of great things going on. And, um, you know, and I think that's, there's one thing to say about someone being a, a soldier or somebody being a SEAL, uh, you know, taking a fight to the enemy. There's another thing about, you know, really owning that when you come back home and saying, where's my enemy now? Or where's my mission now? What's the thing I need to be fighting for now? And I think you really kind of elevate from soldier to kind of a kingship. And I'm not trying to say that you know, to, to give you a, you know an elevated head or anything like that. But in the, in the mindset of a man, there is something about going from, I'm a guy who takes orders, I'm a guy who gets the job done, to I'm a guy who sees what needs to be done out there, and I'm going to step up and make it happen. And, uh, and so I want to and so I want to jump into that because I think that's where you are now and have been for some time. And, uh, and I just want to ask this question. We'll start off with this. What's your mission now? Like, what's the thing now that you're, that you're after? Well, I'm married now. So I have one, I, you know, used to be my sword and shield belonged to the entire country. Yeah. Now it belongs to that woman. Right. So I spent my entire life becoming a specialist. SEAL stands for sea, air, and land, and that little S at the end, most people don't pay attention to, is specialist. Like, I don't try to master anything. I just try to get as, as good at as many things as humanly possible. My father said that. You try to master one thing, you'll waste your life. Be just as good at as many things as you can, so whatever situation you get into or whoever you're hanging out with, 
you can assimilate. Yeah. And a lot of guys think they come back and they get out of the uniform. It was never your uniform anyway. Camouflage, if you take, if you jerk all those colors out of camouflage, you get the first responders. You smash them back together, you get up. Yeah. As soon as we take it off, it goes back to, it goes to the youngest one, uh, the next version of us, right? And we just keep carrying and protecting that the exterior. We're the steel ring. And once you just take, the, I mean, you take your uniform off when you're in the military. Your skill sets don't go away. That's the beautiful part about being in the military is everything that you get from them goes to the inside of you, not the exterior. A weapon, a knife, a pistol, that's just an extension of what I am. I can, just, I can manipulate, you know, with a pistol, I used to be able to punch somebody right in front of me, and I could punch you two miles away if I want. <laughs> and they think once you get out that it stops, and it doesn't. You just, you just got shifted to a, a, a different command, a different unit. Your, your mission parameters have changed. That's it. You're still a soldier. You know, I, I get up every morning, take tire pressure. My wife's, tired, you know, because she put, put gas in there. She gets breakfast. I take the kids to school. And I'm on the road 300 days a year, man. I, I, she gives me my marching orders first thing in the morning because whatever is standing in front of me is what I'm focused on. Nothing else exists. Yep. yep. If you start to worry about stuff two weeks down the road, then you're, you're not ready for it. You shouldn't be worried about that. It shouldn't be there. Yep. The only thing you worry about two weeks down the road is a vacation with the family in a minivan across country. That kind of stuff. And that's, that's a blessing, a, a, a curse of blessing, right? That yeah. teaches you humility. And it also, God, it's God reminding you, like, hey, if you want to be man enough to have a baby, then you're going to have, you're going to, have to be man enough to have everything that goes with it. Ta-da, yeah. shazam, right there. <laughs> you know, the first 40 years of our life, especially as men, my brother and I had an agreement. No wife, no kids. We were married to training. Everybody gets out of college and they want to be in a hurry to go. I need a house. I need five cars. I need everything my parents had and my grandparents. Why would you want that? Yep. Most people were trying to get away from their parents and their grandparents and everything that they had when we were 18, 19. But you, in four years, you want to go back and have everything they had? Come on, man. You don't even know yourself. Yep. The guy you are when you're 20 to 30 to 25, actually, 30, 35, that, that changes every five years for us. You absolutely know nothing about yourself in the first 40 years. You, as a matter of fact, from zero to 40, you just have an opinion. 40 to 60, you have perspective, and then after that, wisdom drops in. And if you think you're, if you're wise enough to have a wife and a bunch of kids, a mortgage, trying to find a job, whenever the rest of us are out here trying to find a job too, by the way, and, and, and you're wondering why it's hard. <laughs> I mean, every day of my life is an adventure. From the time I get up, from the time I go outside those gates, and now it's at the behest of my wife. If not, if I'm at, at home, I get up in the morning, like I said, I take care of her. She, I get the kids off. I come back. She heads out, out the gate. And I just, I'm the groundskeeper now. I'm mowed. Just, I live on 200 acres. I'm outside all day till three o'clock. Kids get home. Then I go in and cook dinner. Yeah. That's my new mission. And people, guys, you know, it's a pride thing. But any dude who comes home and has to talk down to his wife or put his hands on her when she doesn't want it, it's just a punk. Yep. I mean, he's, he's, he's insecure and getting picked on by a dude. And then, so he has to come up. I've never raised my voice to the woman ever. And I say that with 100% confidence. And you can ask because I've kept up with that. I come from a matriarchal family. I was raised by women. I, yep. I know yep. what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do. There's, there's the alpha mentality or, or that alpha masculine, whatever they want to call it. That's just the most dangerous thing on the planet besides a teenage boy that doesn't know sex education is, is an <laughs> untrained, disciplined human mind. You just want, you, look, we don't grow up fast. We just get big fast. All right. Yep. And you, you have a baby Huey walking around dumb as shit. I mean, what do you, what do you expect? So anytime, I mean, if you don't train your kids to do something, somebody else will. It always baffles me. Like we'll train our kids to get dressed, to feed themselves, but they want people want to teach your kids to protect themselves. And I, I mean, not just from bullies, but it's from, from anything, right? Self defense just doesn't protect you from a fight. It protects you from. It gives you a cognitive awareness that you just don't have because it's an instinctual thing. It's like a predatory defense mechanism. But if you don't know how to defend yourself, you then you become prey. And you can't look at it as like I'm teaching them to fight. No, you're not teaching them. To, what? No, you're just teaching them defense. Right, right. Like you teach right. offense, but you don't teach them any defense. I don't understand that. Like I don't like snakes, but we have them everywhere out here. So I teach my kids how to deal with it. Same with with with, with weapons, knives in the drawer, you know, the, the cars, everything around them. Yeah, it's it's situational awareness. Because look, here it works like this: 
we all have our own reality that we create for ourselves. And we get up in the morning, and say, it, it, when there's no one else around, it's just our reality. It's perfect. The trick is, when you walk into somebody else, you have to deal with their reality. Because they, they just come smashing together. And if you're not prepared for everything that comes with them, then it can either be good or bad. But a lot, of, and, and, the, and another thing that people do is they, like, oh, I uh, had a bad, bad situation, and it just ruined me. Well, something bad that you go through or that you take is just something, it's not something you have to take your entire life. It's, it's what you can take at that moment. It's like a test. Once you get out of school, there are no more written tests. It's just the hard times. And if you're not paying attention, you're going to get hit hard. I mean, especially if you're not paying attention during your good times. Right, right. I was talking to a company the other day, man, and they were talking about the downturn and the, and the business. And we, we know, the, it just, everything just kind of went down. I was like, well, did it go down or did it just go back to a place that you had already been? Because this didn't start off great. You had to plow your way through hell to get here, right? So you kind of got to look at those downturns or the hard times. It's, it's just like a, a, like a restart, like a retrain to make sure that you're still, if you're still worthy to be in the spot that you're in right now. That's all that is. And if you're just up there having a great time and just enjoying it and not doing what you're supposed to be doing, then you're, gonna, you're not going to hold on to that for a while. You're just not. And the reason being is because there's somebody else behind you working just as hard as you did trying to get there. Yeah, absolutely. And the minute you disrespect anything and everything around you, it'll start to go, God will take it away from you. Yeah. Anything you throw out of your mouth will come around on the backside eventually. And it's just... It's a balance, right? It's kind of if you if you thought about it like this before you came down here, if you got to write out your life, like you're just sitting around with your boys, like, hey, I'm gonna do this, and I, I I'm gonna test myself so hard that I'm gonna put myself in this environment, but I know I can make it back out. Well, there wouldn't be all good times. I mean, hell, if you're measuring your life off of somebody else's good times, yep, then that, that's not your life. You're just living somebody else's story. Every Every book that's ever been written, every movie that's ever been played, sonnet, poem, quote, whatever, is waiting to be relived again by the next generation. Because our kids are the next version of us. Mark 1, Mod 2, right? Just all the doors are shut. Like, I could never beat on myself. I can I can understand why my dad would beat me like he wouldn't, because I would never beat the next version of me. Sure. It just hinders me. I would never talk down to me. I would understand what I couldn't learn and what I couldn't learn at that given moment. And I would have patience with myself. Patience, that's not the right word. Discipline for me because a lot of people think I have patience because of what I, I, I can do or what I have done, right? Right, and right. Truth be told, I, don't, I, I hardly have any patience. I have discipline. <laughs> My right. brother and I were born, we're identical twins. I mean, being born was tough on us. Born two months early. I mean, he, I was four pounds. Three ounces, he was three pounds, eight ounces. Hell, when I graduated high school, I was five, six, 154 pounds, all right? Yeah. Got picked on. The good Lord dosed me up with the ugly armor at birth. My eyes were crossed in all different directions. Man, I just, I don't have, I, I still to this day, I didn't have, I don't have depth perception. Mm. I just have depth in my perception. So my dad always like, that's what we're going to oh, do. That's good. I like that. So, I mean, it's, it's one of those deals where my dad would always say, like, hey, I'm not your friend. And, and I, I couldn't understand that until I had kids. And now I understand it perfectly well because I do dumb things with my friends. I still have the same friends I've had since grade school. All right. When we get together, we do stupid things because we're just, we go back to being kids. Right. Yeah. So if, if you go to man up and have kids and it's like, all right, I got to be the, the I got to be a dad. I got to be a father. So I got to be, like, Hey, look, that was cool. Don't ever do it again. You understand? It's, and all these rules that we place on our kids and our teenagers, they think that they're stupid. I'm like, yeah, they're stupid. Tell you the stupid, I'm putting the stupid rules on you just to see if you can follow those. Because if you can't follow the stupid rules, I'm definitely not going to give you any responsibilities where there's some big ones. Mm, that's good. And it's all the way, it's just the way you describe it to somebody. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of one of like, you can come in as the overbearing and be like, hey, this is my house, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can do that. It's your house. Or you can be like, hey, I'm training you not to leave. I'm training you to be a part of this. So I need, I mean, I, I got to do whatever I can to make sure I, I do that. Anytime I walk into a room, I automatically assume that you're my brother or my sister. You just don't know it. Mm -hmm. I do. I, we were yeah. separated at birth. So there's nothing you can say to me that's going to drive me away. I mean, if you're having a bad day, everybody has a bad day. I mean, you need to vent then. The good thing about my, my, my skin, my armor, is words can't hurt it. it you know, because words mean different things in different languages. And I've been around the world more times. I've been cussed at in so many different languages. Who knows if they're happy or sad? <laughs> 
So when you're sitting there thinking about it like that, and somebody's beating you up with words, you're like, all right, man, that's all you got. I'll just wait till you're done. We'll figure this out. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, don't waste your time on it because they're, 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 you know, people go through phases. It, 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 they have to. Like I said, we, we don't grow up fast. We get big fast. Yeah. Every day of that is, is a test. It, it truly is. It's just a, a defining test to make sure you're paying attention for this this short period. I mean, it doesn't the Bible that if a, a day with the Lord is a thousand years down here, you and I have probably been alive for what, 43 minutes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 41 minutes, 40, you know, something like that. When I mean, you crunch the math numbers on that. Sure, yeah. It, 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 I mean, you're telling me you can't, you, you can't act right for, for, for that amount of time? Of course you're going to screw up. I mean, everybody thinks you got to be perfect, and, I mean, you're not God, you're Jesus, right? We make mistakes. That's right. the whole point. This whole thing is a learned environment. It, 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 it's a dynamic. It changes all the time. So we have to change with it. The, the trick is changing with each other and to make sure that we survive with each other. Because if you're bitching about something other than water, food, and shelter, and safety, then, uh, man, you're just complaining. <clears throat> well, and I like what you're saying here because, and the guys who are listening to this, what I'm hearing is, the mindset that you have, the never quit mindset and the fact that this is a training ground, this is a testing ground, you take that even into your marriage, you take that into raising kids. And I think a lot of guys who haven't served in the military or maybe who did serve, but they didn't serve the way they wanted to, they kind of have a, a, a bit of a guilt there of, you know, I'm not doing the, the important manly work that ought to be done. But what you're saying is the mission at home or the mission, even, you know, with the Team Never Quit and the Lone Survivor Foundation, wherever you see your mission that becomes a training ground. That becomes just as important as, you know, the work out there in the field that you got to do, uh, right? I mean, that's that's the mindset. Oh, man. Hey, look, we, most of us sign up and keep signing up for those jobs in the military where the job sucks the worst. Navy SEALs is the hardest job ever. I mean, that job is miserable. But if, you sign, if you're going in for that with those guys, but hey, man, we're here for that. The minute you start to tell yourself this sucks, I'm, I'm, this is bad, then you, you, you missed the point, right? You forgot why you were there. Yeah. Yes, it's tough. It's supposed to be. And then once you find joy in that, you come back. Hell, the biggest, the hardest mission there is and the most rewarding and honorable one is being a father and, yeah. a, and a husband. So you, you need to, I mean, you're sitting there going, look, you're not doing manly. That's the most manly thing there is. I yeah. mean, what do you want? Glory? That's what, you're, that's what you want is glory. All right. Sure. And this, this, you, from everybody else, the glory is sustaining your family. And the mission, and there are no hard days. It's just the day, right? It's like, this is what got dropped in front. This is my mission for today. And, and if it's tough, so I, sometimes I can't understand why guys are complaining because it's not tough enough or it's too tough and you don't think, it's, but it's not manly tough. Well, sure. I don't understand what that means, man. If it's tough and it's tough for you and you're a man, then, I, then what are you talking to? You're, basically, I mean, you just listen to everybody else. All right. So don't quit doing that. It, you're, you're running this one, right? And as soon as you get married, she's the boss. That's the new admiral or general. Get up in the morning, whatever she says. Keep that woman happy. Happy wife, happy life, man. That's your new priority. And then you, you systematically move through that and get, and get more quals and better and better. And then you get your battle rhythm. And you, you start to move together. You see how she operates and how you operate. Because, I mean, I've been sitting in, and I didn't understand this until I actually got married. But you can literally be sitting somewhere with your wife and somebody will be explaining something. And what they hear and what we hear are two entirely different things. Yep. Totally different. Yep. It's not a shot at him. I mean, it's, I think it's glorious. I'm like, hey, I love the fact that that's what you heard. Cause that's yep. not what I got out of that. But if that's what's happening, then you talk to each other. People think, uh, guys, you know, we kind of hold a lot of stuff in for whatever reason, like pride. You need to know that the more you talk, the, the, and we do it in the military, we don't keep stuff from each other because that's how people get killed. Right. That's how marriages fall apart. If you keep stuff like the, the hard stuff, that's what she's there. Women can take, Look, man, they can take twice as much pain as we can. They're designed for a reason. The reason they can have babies and and, and all that is because of the way they're designed. Our fat is, is on the inside of our muscle. That's why we can take pain on the outside and we're built the way we are. Their fat is on the, or their muscle is on the inside of their fat. That's why they can take pain on the inside. Yeah. You know, a guy get a stomachache, he'll be down complaining for a month. Like, honey, my stomach, oh, my God, yeah. But a woman, you know, have a baby and then in, 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 in a few months be ready to do that again. I'm like, man. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's you, kind of a it's a love of the opposites. There are opposites, but they they call it. If you look at at people 
as if they were stones, right? And you're a blade. Right. And everybody around you is either going to sharpen you or dull you. And the ladies, they polish us up. They see things in us that, that we can't. They've done a study over time what happens when you pull women away from men. It's called prison, all right? We separate <laughs> and kill each other. If you throw one woman in the mix, we will calm down, all right? And it's their life everlasting, right? We carry the fertilizer and they carry the seed, and we're built like we are to protect that. They're built the way they are to, to carry it. And yeah. it's just a, it's a give and take. Without each other, we would cease to exist. Well, we talk about the different the different types of battle, the battle at home, you know, to, to take care of our families, to stay committed in our relationships, to raise our sons versus the battle out there on the field. And, one, you know, the battle in the field is the, like I said before, that's the thing in front of you. That's the thing you can go fight. You can point a gun at somebody. You know, that's how guys envision it anyhow, right? And the battle that's back at home, that's one where we don't know if we can win because that's that that challenges us in ways that we're not used to it feels uncomfortable it's not the you know we don't we don't we don't want to go there but I, the, you know I, your home is your team room it's it's the yeah the base right it's, it's in garrison you're at home with your teammates there shouldn't be any problems that's where you work the problems out right and then the field is when you walk out of the house you run into everybody else that's who you're competing against you don't look at them like an enemy it's just a time it goes from from fight wars to competition because you can still get in a fight out, out in public but when you come back Everybody in that house better be a part of that team. And then you talk about what went on. And then, you, I mean, they, the more you talk about it and more opinions you got coming in or, or in perspectives and wisdom, the better. This is where you come to calm down. This is where you go to relax. And, and if you bring that stuff into the house, then you bring it into your house. You're not supposed to do that. There's yeah. 24 hours in a day. 12 of it better be for work and 12 of it better be for play. That's awesome. Yeah, I agree. Totally I mean, you, you, you have to line it out like that. Yeah. If you, you, the military teaches us for a reason. We don't lose that when we leave. They don't take that away from us. We, I, I run this place like a military compound. Like I told you, you were talking about how, how when you were trying to get, uh, get into this camp, I mean, you had to go through all the, all the ladies, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean they've been around. You can't, you can't just talk to them like that. Yeah. And if it, you know, once it gets to me, if it's a problem, I get rid of it right then and there. Like if they, they can't, if there's something that is that, that metastasizes a problem and I hear about it, it's gone right then and there. Otherwise, everything runs just a smooth outlet. He's stressed behind his gates. You're not allowed to raise your voice out here. I mean, it's it's like that, bro. And you can do that. You don't have to. Look, I was this guy before I went through all of all of this, right? This has just kind of molded me in, in the, in, into my perspective. What I've seen, I've seen all this because of the pe our people. I go out every day in, in 300 days a year around. All of us, city to city, state to state, athletes, astronauts, bikers, billionaires, you name it. Yeah. And I learned anything and everything I can learn from them. That's what's so unique about them. And they, each person around you will teach you something about yourself. That's the best part about having a big family and, and, and preferably a crazy one. Like, oh, man, crazy Uncle Joe's coming over for Thanksgiving. <laughs> man, I love him, dude. I'll sit yeah, there yeah. and listen to that dude talk all day because... And I figured how this came into play for me. When I got captured by the enemy and they started working me, yeah. I just automatically, in my mind, when, that, when, that, when all that was going down, I just put each one of those people in, in a member in my family. Oh, wow. And that's how I kind of would relate. So there are no more bad times if everyone around you is your family. Mm. Right? Even up to a fist fight, if it gets that bad, you just walk away and leave. But the more the more friends you have, like I have, like I said, the same friends I've had since childhood. And the reason is because they have a strength that I have as a weakness. Yeah, that's good. And it doesn't have to be a physical thing; it could be a laugh or an emotion. You don't think traveling back in time is impossible? You get your same friends you've had around since kindergarten, get together and start hanging out, drink old beer, so <laughs> and you go right back to that moment, right? You just can't yeah. go forward because that's the part you're living out. So there's a uh, there's a picture on uh, if you guys go over to uh, to Team Never Quit and you go to the podcast page. There's a there's a the picture that comes up there. There's like you know you're like on a bike. One of the other guys is on like a, a motor you know like a little motorbike. You guys are all like doing kind of childish stuff, which is just awesome because it does it does go back to that. You know we're we're still boys at heart in a lot of ways, and we and that's not a bad thing. We we need some no, aspect no, no. of that. So well, I thought that was hilarious. I, look, you should never lose that. You should never stop believing in everything that you believed in as a kid. Man, I mean that's you're not supposed to do that. You're just supposed to add on experience and, and, and the learning onto that kind of that spirit. Cause that's what gets you into everything. Anyway, that's what makes you try everything. The minute you get dull back there is, uh, 
that you get when you get dulled out, it means you're working too hard in that in that whatever's in front of you. And the best part about your friends is they will jerk you out of that because whatever's going on in their life becomes a part of yours. My friends, if they're going through a bad time, man, I'm going through it with them. That's yeah. what friends do. Yeah. So if if you're in a bad time, they'll be there for you. It's we're all in it. And when you're all in something, it's different. You're not going through it alone. You should never be alone. If you if you're married, kids, and friends, you should never be alone. And if someone someone's not willing to go through that time with you, then they're not your friend. Mm. Yeah, and, and you're right, man. When we get together, dude, we're like a pack of wolves. Wolf, look, cubs, man. Like we just we start playing around, wrestling. That's what we do. <laughs> it's, it's in our nature to start goofing off and do that with each other because we did it when we were boys. So, I, my wife and and all the wives when they see us, our crew running around together, man, they just they they laugh. So we do the dumbest. I mean, stuff when we were kids, we still play pranks on each other, and it. I mean, we laugh so hard, and, and you should never. As you're going through life, there's never a point where you go do something and, and you're not taking them with you. Yeah. It's, you know, I don't care what it is. I don't care what job profession. I mean, I was a SEAL. You do what you did. I mean, all this, I mean, I took all my friends with me through everything. Every day. I call, talk to them about my day. The minute I wake up, I head outside that gate. I'm looking for them. I check in with them every day in the morning. I mean, all of them. And I like a lot of guys are missing that. I mean, you know, we're such a mobile society now and we, you know, we're moving, I moved away from Tennessee, come out here to Charlotte and I've been here for, you know, more, more time out here in Charlotte than I was when I was in my boyhood out in Tennessee. And then I went to the military. I was in the Navy for a few years. I got out, you know, just going through boot camp, and then getting married young and having kids. And there's, there's an aspect there where I'm, I'm realizing now at 41 that I've, I've kind of lost some part of my, my way of thinking as a, as a boy that I really want to get back. I want to reconnect with that fun and that, and that, and that kind of stuff. Well, it helps you with when you're having ki- when you're raising kids. Like when I go to watch yeah. cartoons with my kids, the best part about our technology, <laughs> that, that fires them. And I watch the cartoons from when I was a kid. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're in there with me and there's like GI Joe and transformers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, it, it's just all there for us. To, and when you're in there, and they're having a good time. If you, we usually do it from we wake up in the morning. Like, my wife is pregnant. We're getting kids ready to get, get to school, man. We, got, we put that on. And then in the afternoons, it's kind of like we're all cooking dinner together and eat, sit around the table and, and talk about the day. Kids are going to be kids. Like the other day I came home, I got a six and a seven-year-old. I was like, hey, how was school? They were like, good. You know, same answer we always get. I was like, you didn't go to school today. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're like, <laughs> right. uh, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, right? I was like, hey, I mean. I'm going to let you pull some stuff over on me just because, you know, I'm your dad. And I'm, I'm going to see whether I, I know the rules and I know you know the rules. And I know I'm just waiting to see if you break them or not. And some of them yep. are meant to be tested, right? Kids have to be, I kind of call us stuck parents, right? Because something, especially our generation, Gen X, something yep. bad comes down. Or our kids do something and be like, oh, that was cool. But watch this. Watch me. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, watch this. And, um, <laughs> but they have to, uh, you know, they got to fall down uh, because they're going to fall down sometime. You can't yep. be with them their their entire life so you want a like a big a big child going out there and facing the world because they'll just get it'll be worse than getting picked on when they were when they were little yeah and there's a, we're talking about balance i mean at the end of the day we're not saying go back to boyhood irresponsibility and all that kind of stuff what we're saying is you got to have you got to be able to kind of know how to flow in and out of that state um, and, and not necessarily be stuck there because like you said, that's the those are the guys that aren't men i mean they're they're grown males but they're not they're acting they're not acting like men and never think, always think about it like this. All right. I mean, boil it back down to when we were all, uh, this is what, one big high school. The United States got one big high school, if you will. And uh, if sure. you look at the White House, it's the first family. So you got the mom and dad up there. You got the senators and Congress. That's aunts and uncles. And you got all the family down here underneath. There are people that literally just in a bad mood all the time. And they say ugly things. And they'll be like, you know what? I would never say this, but if I did, I would say it like this. Well, you just said it. That's the same thing. You can play these word games all day long, all right? You can, and, and, and it, that's what it is. It's a chess match about who, who can get one over on the other. It's a verbal chess match. Yeah. That, 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 that's, our, that's our competition. I mean, back in the day, they built coliseums around the gladiators. We still do that. It's called football, basketball. Mm-hmm. We still go and watch our titans of our city compete against the other titans. I mean, we, we do. It, it, all that is actually the same, man. And when you – Kind of when you're walking around and you recognize it, each type of person that we have here, because that's the most beautiful thing about our country, man. You 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 change your your head a degree 
the canvas changes, the color, it sways differently, you know, all the backgrounds, and it's just, it's the most beautiful thing ever in this country. It's, it's an anomaly. No, I was going to say, and you definitely see that in the military. That was one of the things that, that I was really awoken to was just that, man, there's, there's every color and creed showing up in this thing. And the, the, mil- the military doesn't doesn't tolerate any kind of racism. We had a uh, we had an incident actually in boot camp where a guy who had been kind of sent back had to kind of run, go through boot camp a few times because he was a troublemaker. He actually peed in one of the one of the black guys' um, uh, canteens, and you know we all woke up in that morning to them basically fighting because you know the guy had woken up and you know take a drink from his his canteen and had piss in it, and you know. The, the petty officer comes in, finds out what's, what happened, and he snatched that guy by the hair, the, you know, the, the, the troublemaker, dragged him out. That was the last we ever saw of him, you know. Yeah. And so there's not going to be, I mean, granted, it's not a perfect place, but that's one of the places that you learn, look, you got to work together. You may not have grown up with guys like that, but it doesn't matter. You, right now, you're on the same mission. Yeah, you're going to see that, ig- that ignorance and hate everywhere. All sure. right? it's, just, that's, it's, it's pockets, and you're, and you're right. What the military teaches us is that this country – is, is a is a melting pot. Right now, we're going through our era of decadence. Every every civilization, every empire goes through an era of decadence. It's usually around every two hundred fifty years, which is us. So the baby boomers are in office right now. They're holding the house and and the lands, and they hate each other. Hate each other. I mean, most of the the average age is probably seventy up there, right? Which means they were forty when we were born. They're not going to listen to what we have to say. And their war messed them up. Vietnam. So you got the 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 baby boomers, the hippies, and the, and the Everybody, they just do not like each other. You yeah. can see plain, this isn't a shot at them. This is the fact. Sure. Well, every generation is raised by the grandparents. We were raised by the greatest generation. The baby boomers got rid of segregation. They did. Guess who had to, who who learned to live with? We did. Our generation mm-hmm. came up. We got hip hop. I mean, all the, from country music, <laughs> yeah. everything just came melt, just slamming together. Yep. And and that's our that's why our generation is so extreme and and, and so hard and so good at what we do. Not only that, the baby boomers hated war. They hated their war so much yep. that they put their children in the longest war in history. A 20 yep. year war, man. We've been fighting these terrorists. And, uh, and while we were doing all this, I mean, you didn't have to be in the military to be a part of this. 9 11 affected our generation completely. We were just coming of age. So we have been pushing in all different directions to try and make this thing work. And, and what is that? They jumped over our heads of our kids and they're teaching this hate. And this racism and all this stuff, and, and, and these younger kids, they don't, they don't, they don't understand, they don't see it, right? Right. And, right. and it just, it's pissing them off. And they're like, "Man, I'm not a racist. Quit, quit calling me that. You slam that title down on somebody." And it's just like, "Hey, man, there are pockets of that around here, and you, show us where they're at. We're gonna take care of them right now." I spent my entire <laughs> adult life fighting to get my brothers off their knees, right? Everybody yeah. just gotta get in here and show each other that we love each other so much that we have been fighting an invisible army for 20 years and we still keep getting it done. We don't even think about that kind of crap until somebody else, throw, you know, you know, people are competing against each other and they're not winning something, but all right, race. Well, you, you throw that at me, man. If you throw that race, I will slam. I mean, that is just the most ridiculous thing to do to somebody because you don't like each other. Yep. And, yeah. and it's called, a lot of it's called being ugly. I mean, it's easy to be mean. I mean, most people, a lot of people waking up, man, they, they go into work just ready to be mean. Sure. Uh, most of the journals you see on TV, like I said, you boil it down to high school. They're the ones that start all the fights. Hey, did you hear what the name said about you? Hey, did you hear what he said about you? Well, no one said anything. Right? And it's, yeah. And, it's just, and the, the amount of hypocrisy is, I, I hope that they understand. It's the one thing I, I I never planned to be the best in anything, or but I am a specialist. And I'm a specialist at reconnaissance, studying humans. That's what I did in, in the teens, right? Yeah. And traveling on the road, public speaker, and doing everything. I, I I hang out with everybody. I hear all this stuff. What they're saying, man. They're most of the American people are getting upset with everybody being up there being mean to each other. They're, they're just being ugly. No one back in the day when you would elect a politician, you send them to D.C. to argue about all this stuff, so we wouldn't do it out here. You don't right, argue right. with kids. You just don't do that. But they take it, they get on TV and, and throw it out to us. As if they're not doing their job, they want us to do it. They want us to settle all this out here and then let them go, you know, reap the rewards for it. I, mean, I was reading something the other day, man. Somebody, some of those politicians have been in politics for, for 20 years and are it's worth ridiculous. over $100 million. $100 yeah, million. Yeah. Dollars. yeah, and you don't, get, you don't get paid that much being a politician. I mean, the salary, right? <laughs> that is yeah. unbelievable. I mean, 20 years they went and they weren't worth anything. Now they're mm-hmm. worth that much money. I'm like, hey, if you're worth that much money, you better 
get stuff done. And the biggest thing that irritates me, and this is this part between our generation and theirs, is like, well, we had a, we actually got a bipartisan deal. I'm like, what does that mean? Like both of y'all work together. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. We know these, these are hard, right? We, this is a big family. Not everyone's going to be happy all the time. That's not how a family works. Y'all are supposed as the adults in the room, are supposed to figure out the common middle ground. Sometimes people are going to get a little bit more on this side as opposed to that side, but something down the road, it'll change. At no point in time do you ever change the rules because you're not winning. That is just absolutely ridiculous. And to do that in front of all of us is embarrassing. Well, it is because they act, they act like a bipartisan deal is uh, is a victory of the century. And you're like, no, that's how people, you know, I, I do bipartisan deals every time I make a uh, an agreement with somebody. We all do that. Everybody outside of D.C. every single day is a bipartisan agreement. Husband and wife, wife and kid, <laughs> dad, it's every, until you get up there. You want to shock me or uh, tell me that y'all didn't do something together. That's when you start thinking, hey, wait a minute. If y'all didn't figure this out together, that means somebody's getting everything and nobody's getting something else. Right, right. All of this could be bipartisan. I don't care how hard it is to figure out. I don't care how hard you get yelled at. That's why you, that's why you get the expensive suit, the nice office, the plane, and the respect. But I mean, you just, you know, y'all aren't doing that. Y'all, y'all just kind of like arguing uh, up in front of all the, arguing in front of the kids. And well, how do you, if anybody who grew up in a family where the parents argue in front of you, it hurts, it hurts in the stomach, it does, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Why, why aren't they getting along? Well, can't they just get along? That's what it feels like out here. And I'm the Navy SEAL, for God's sake. But I hear, I, mean, I can see these people's faces, man, when they're just, they don't know what to do and they're not supposed to. Most of them aren't even at the age where they don't even know how it, it, it actually should work, right? And that's, that's by design. Yep. But when you get the one, when, you, when our leaders are up there, and, and this is the thing that blows me away. You got somebody up there who running for office and you've seen them, the same faces for 20 years and they're still saying that they want to get the same thing done and it had been done. Yeah, you got to ask yourself, I mean, if you were running a business, would you hire that guy? You know? I know. No. I know. Wouldn't, you, I wouldn't you, hire you, the guy that's failed right, for 20 let me years. Tell you right now, okay, you're 19 million trillion dollars in debt. You, yep. you, you, hadn't, you hadn't done anything. Sweet. Let's hire this dude. And they get away with it, you know, year after year because, you know, that's the – so many Americans think that that's just the way it is. You know, we, we have a kind of a defeatist attitude about our politics and stuff as well. So yeah. Well, a lot of things you got to remember, too. Imagine any, any job you get. You come in, you do your interview, then you come in to work the first day as a new guy or a new girl, right? And, yeah. and all you've been telling everyone is, like, I'm going to change the way they do everything up here. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to implement this. I'm going to do that. And then you get into work, and then everyone who's been there ahead of you is like, hey, get in line. So then you, you know, you don't do anything. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Instead of saying, hey, I'm going to go in there and work with everybody and we're going to try to do this and blah, blah, blah. Instead of just saying, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to do that, man. You don't know nothing. What do you know? Right. Yep. All yep. you try to tell everybody what you want to do. You're going into the office and there's people who have been there for this long. You just, I don't, that's not how that works. And everyone knows that. It, it's just like, hey. Take a step back. We're family. All right. And we kind of, the, the, the parents have been arguing with each other for a while, but we don't do that. Our generation, we don't, we just don't do that. And I know that because I've been out there. I've seen it. Yeah. Yep. I want to shift a little bit. I want to, I want to talk about some of the things you've got going on with Team Never Quit and the Lone Survivor Foundation. So I'm here in North Carolina. I think you guys have got a, a Lone Survivor, uh, yep. kind of like a ranch or something that's going to be opening up in Fayetteville later this year. And tell us about what that is, because that was to just the whole experience that you you talked about your recovery on the Lone Survivor uh, Foundation page. You talked a little bit about how nature and just kind of getting back to your roots and stuff helped a lot with your recovery. What is the Lone Survivor Foundation, and 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 how is that how is that equipping and helping uh, you know the vets that have had some kind of trauma? The thing that I've been through throughout my life, if it's helped me, someone's helped me or healed me or made me better, I've gone back and recreated it for everybody else who's coming in. Just because if it'll work on me, it'll work on anybody else. I'm not special in any way yeah. at all. When I was in the hospital after Afghanistan, they kept saying, hey, what, do you, what, what, what can we do to make you better? And I was like, just send me home. Just give me back to the house, back to my friends and my family, and I'll heal up. Well, they sent me back. They came with me, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, uh, I got to go home, and my healing time doubled because they pulled me out of the environment. I mean, hospitals are great, patching us up. Man, you can stay in there for a while and digress. I mean, just kind of – Sure. It's designed for healing. And then they're patching you up. You heal out in the back home around all your friends. I mean, just you get back to the, to the lifestyle that puts you into the, to the, that environment in the beginning. 
it reminds you of, of that fire that's actually burning inside of you. Because like I said, a bad time isn't something that you have to go through every single day. It's just what you went through it that day or week or whatever it was. Yeah. And then if you come out on the other side, you take the good and the bad, it lets you know how far you can be pushed and what you can handle and what you can't. There's no, there's no disgrace in getting hit and going down to a knee. I mean, the, the toughest among us go down to a knee all the time. Yep. Just get back up. That's it. <clears throat> so it was designed off of that. And then it was a, it's like a family environment. You can pull a guy away from the military and send him somewhere and heal him up and send him back to his family. Well, his family, we, we, they go through all that stuff with us because they love sure. us. So we, it's all about the, the, the kind of redeveloping the family dynamic. And if some of these guys don't have big families, that's all right. I do. You know, I got friends everywhere, man. I, I, we pull them in and just remind you that you're a warrior. Mm, that's so good. Warriors get hit. Matter yeah. of fact, the more scars you have, man, that's kind of our degrees on our, on, we don't, we don't keep them on the wall. We keep them on our body. Mm, Every yeah. tattoo I have on me is when I've been bested in battle. Uh, so all I have to look down, if I'm going through a hard time, I just look down at myself and if you can't do to me what's already been done and I don't worry about you. Man. I know I can take it. But as each one of the foundations that I've started perpetuates one of those healing moments for me. Yeah. And I never stop being from the, Lone Survivor Foundation to the boot campaign to Team Never Quit to, and Team Never Quit is kind of like a hub. It's all these guys coming in and, and remember you're trained. If you've been in the military, man, you are an absolute trained asset. They can't take that away from you. It's still in there. And once you remember that, once you know that you are tr a trained asset, no matter what you did in the military, you can be trained to do anything. Anything that you want to do after the military, you can do. School, yeah. college, doctor, lawyer, count. It doesn't matter. All you have to do is put your head to it and go. The problem is when we get out, as opposed to when we're in, when we get in, what they do is they take our, if they take that, that feeling, if I'm not doing something, then nothing, then something's not getting done. You know what I mean? Yeah. They put that into us. But when you get out and you're not doing anything, it's okay. It's okay not to, not to be doing something. It doesn't mean nothing's getting done. It just means you're taking a break. Right? Because even when yeah. you get down in the military, your buddy's doing something, you go over to him, you help him out. Well, that's a, that's kind of the tough point when you get out is, is, to, is to remind yourself, like, okay, it's a different area of operation. I got a different mission set. Let's see, let's see what it needs to be like. And just work your way. It doesn't have to happen overnight. You start getting your battle rhythm. It's yeah. routine. Just like we have in the military, you get another one when you go on the outside and you keep adding on to it and adding on to it and adding on. It's not going to be a lot in the beginning. Probably nothing, actually, because you just got out of the military. Take a break. You know, go to school. Don't do nothing. Sure. Always have a plan. I said, from zero to 40, man, us were just training. When I hit yeah. 40, I literally changed directions and went in a completely opposite, down a completely opposite road like I was in kindergarten. And everything, <laughs> with all the knowledge, it's literally that much fun. Well, when you when you... You know, when you get out of the military, I mean, depending on on the rank that you are and your role in the military, it's a little bit different because some some people are they're kind of making their own decisions. They're at an officer level. They're 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 calling the shots and that kind of stuff. But a lot of people aren't. I mean, a lot of guys are just you know we're the grunts. We're the guys getting the job done. We're being told what to do. When you get out, when when you talk about taking a break, some of that is just I need to evaluate the the kind of the field right now. I need to see where I am. I need to take a step back. I'm in a leadership position, Absolutely. and if nothing yeah. else, I'm I'm leading myself or my family. I get I get that. I get that whole rank thing, 20 years of pulling your weight, but you, you have stepped out of one environment that you work, work, worked your way up. And if you're trying to go into another one, everybody has to start at the bottom. Yeah, everybody right. knows when they go to work for one of those companies and daddy hands the keys over to the son without him having to work up through the mailroom or whatever, that just, gonna... just causes problems. Yep. Always. And look, there's a lot of bliss and kind of ease and, and tension relief that, that goes into starting over. Like, imagine an admiral coming in, and he's been an admiral for however long. He don't want those responsibilities anymore, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> Otherwise, he wouldn't have got out of being an admiral. So if he's trying to start over something else, but he's starting at the bottom, you don't have any responsibility. You just have all the knowledge, and you just learn faster. And, and I mean, it's kind of, you want to go back down that route. It's kind of, and that's swallowing your pride. If you walk out of, a lot of, it happens with team guys. Like, you go into a different job, like, oh, the Navy SEAL. Well, guess what? We don't have Navy SEALs here. We have accountants. So you need to learn these books. You know, I mean, it's kind of one of them deals. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's, you should want to do that. You should want to, to learn the basics because you'll pick them up a lot faster because you, you, you know yeah. how to do that. You, you're, you're trained in how to do that. If you skip any of those steps, 
it'll bite you. And that's where, that's where that animosity comes in from the people who have been there from the beginning. It, it's okay. Same principle as the civilian came in and he just put, put some rank on him mm-hmm. just because yeah. he had the background in it. Like, he, you know, you know what I mean? Everyone yeah. be like, well, man, we look, I, I get that, <laughs> but let's just, let's think about this reality check. All right. Are you that well trained in it or do you mind being trained in it? And if he's, if you're coming out and you're, you're excited about it. You say, man, I just start me at the bottom. Let me prove myself again. Yeah. Always prove yourself. That's, that's what you should always want to be doing, man. The minute you become the best, there's only one way down from there. And you never become the best, by the way. You just become really proficient at it. Right, right. So when you're, when you're doing your recovery, and you talked about going back home, there, there's something that's special, I think, about your home environment than what other people probably experience. I mean, you've got some, you've got some quiet, you've got some nature, you've got some outdoors time, you know. And, and I think there's something that's really healing about about that. A lot, a lot of guys don't get that. A lot of guys go back to the city, or they're going back to a dysfunctional family, um, you know. And it's just it's, it's rough on them. So when you when you guys are putting the, together these these ranches for the Lone Survivor Foundation. I guess that's kind of that's a big piece of it, right? Is just having that sort of surrounded by nature in the outdoors kind of element. There's the one piece of advice I can give you, man. If you're from the city, you need to have a redneck friend. If you're from the <laughs> there city, you, go. you need to have a city friend. Yeah. And it's not hard to make friends. It's really not. And, they, and a lot of friends have great families. If you don't have a good dad, somebody does. I mean, I was raised up by there's plenty of dads around. Mine, mine was good. It was just hard. It was yeah. tough on me. Sure. My friends loved him. They were the best friend, but he wasn't my friend. He's my father. Yeah. And it's, yeah, man, every environment, but you're a grown man now. I mean, you, you're going back to that same thing. You're either trying to fix it or you're not fixing it and you're just suffering. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, there's, there's no reason. There's no reason. This, this country is way too big. Our people are way too giving and forgiving for anyone to really suffer. Um, and ex- I mean, extend a period of time without getting out, out of that environment and going the next town over or the next state over and finding somebody to your equivalent who loves doing what you do and, and wants to be happy with you. Because I can assure you, there are people who are unhappy around. They are. They're just in the wrong spot. Make a move. It's fear. Fear, and that's, but fear is the unknown. You're just not trained in the situation that you're, that's presented itself. People call sure. me a hero. I'm not. Hero stands for humanity's ever evolving one. Mm. which means one day you're going to get in a situation that you're not trained for and you're going to step into it. Good, bad, or indifferent, that identifies you as a hero. I've literally been trained out of that. You guys have no idea what y'all created with the field teams and what y'all taught us. <laughs> if you did, you'd probably get rid of it. Right. So when these guys, are, I mean, these guys are you're coming back to a, to a hard family, yeah. well, you just got done with war. War is hard. Right. I mean, if you can survive through that, and, and never forget that, man, if you can live through all of that, then you can live through this. Because this is our this is where you came from. You left your normal life, or you left your life. You went. You got trained. Say that. Say you came from a hard family life. You That's actually true. left, to the, and the government trained you how to handle that. Handle war. If you grew up in a family environment that's war, you just got trained for it. You can go back, learn how to deal with it. Now you know. You know if you need to move on. You know what you need to fix. You've been trained to handle all of that. Never forget that. That's good. That's good. Well, look, I know we're running low on time here. I wanted to throw out a few questions uh, to you, just kind of rapid fire here. Um, some some of the guys in our Facebook group, we got about three thousand guys over there. I told them that you're going to be coming on to the podcast, and I said, "Hey, do you have any questions for Marcus?" They they they've got a bunch of questions here, but I'm going to only, only just going to grab a few here, and uh, and I just want to throw your way and see what you think. Um, so you know, what is what is one element that you would say is essential for manhood? Well, you got to believe in God. You got to believe in something above yourself. You know, put your faith in God and Jesus and, and then and always answer something higher than you because if you climb this ladder that we've built down here, a lot of these guys get, get a complex where they you know, they, they can't go any higher. They're just always answer to some something above you. Right? That's and awesome. never forget yeah. never forget that we're all competing against each other. And all the words we learned and all the, the you know, the tricks and everything like that are to go against each other in competition. Right, mm-hmm. and as far as you, and I mean, it can get competition can get real heated and heavy. That's that's the sign, and that's the way it is. But anybody who's standing across from you has the same emotions going through them that you do. You're just seeing who put the most work in to kind of harness and train those emotions. That's good. That's good. And, 
and then the younger, I mean, and, and you're young, but you, you're going to make mistakes in your youth. You're supposed to. The only way you can make one is if you're actually out there trying. Learn from it. Every single one of them is a test. Everything you go outside the walls of your house, from the minute you get up and you walk outside, it starts. Imagine your work hour from 10 to 3, right? And anything that's dropped in front of you from that moment on is a test. If it's a bad, you know, just some bad stuff going down, man, that's just the bad stuff going down around you, and you've been put there to deal with it. See if you can handle it. Just to see if you can handle it. And mm. every single day will make you stronger. That's good. And man. at the end of every day, man, you wind it down, just wind it down. Just don't focus on all that bad. Don't drag that bad stuff with you. Don't your phone. I, I, I very rarely carry my phone. <laughs> and so think about it like that. Anything you want to get into, you were trained for that, guys. Your body is designed to handle anything. I was the weakest among us. I mean, I've been hit so hard. Bones, I've been ripped apart, man, put back together multiple times. But that's okay. I mean, I didn't get this. I mean, 43 years, going 44 years, this is one of those I figured this out a while ago and everything's just been easy. Every single day is a battle, and I want it that way. I always want to be tested. I have one foot, you know, in the bad part, one foot on the good, dragging both sides with me. Just to, imagine if you got two wolves living inside of you. Yeah. One, one's dark, it's evil, it's, it's, it's rage and you know, malice and discontent. And one is good, it's pure love, compassion. And the way you know which one of those wolves wins is the one you feed, right? Yeah, so good. as you go through life, man, you kind of want to feed both of those. In, in, our, in our realm, being a man, you, you need to feed both of them just to make sure that you're ready for anything that comes through that door. That's awesome. Yeah. And no matter how hard you get hit, someone's always going to catch you on the side, man. It's fine. It's, it's designed that way for a reason. They're going to be, I mean, every cycle of life, is a, there's going to be a hard test in it. And just, if you know that, and you know when it goes down, you'll recognize it, that it's okay. We all go through it. And when you come out on the other side, man, think of all the self-help books everybody reads. They always, they always read about the stories about the people who went through hell, came out on the other side, and are willing to talk about it. <laughs> right. That's who helps people. Yeah. People who live a normal life, they don't have, any, they don't have any bad experiences, man. They're just kind of living an idle life. <laughs> I mean, our favorite movie is in all that stuff that we watch and we clamor to are people just going through the most extreme stuff. Yeah. Right, they got the craziest story. Like, when this dude lost a leg, his eyes gone, he come dragging in here, man. It was great. It's the greatest story ever. <laughs> I mean, right. when, you're, when you're done with this and, and you're looking back at your life, you're like, man, I'm sure glad I never went out and got hurt. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm sitting well here and I don't have any memories, I don't have anything to talk to anybody about. Nobody wants to talk to me because all I have to talk about is I just sat in front of a TV all day yeah. and watched well, everybody else live their life. Or you can just go out and live every life that you've ever seen, heard of. Go out, I mean, just go do that. Just, just, there's no shame in that. You don't have to be rich. I mean, wealth is a, is a kind of, an, is a matter of perspective to the person who has it. So is pain and chaos. It's all a matter of the perspective of who the person who's going through it. Something that's terrible for, for me might not be terrible for you and vice versa. But if you know that there's somebody out there who's gone through some stuff that maybe you, you, you're going to go through or you have gone through, man, then you have a connection with them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think even in the midst of, of whatever your chaos happens to be, and you obviously know about this, there, there can be the mindset, and I think there should be the mindset of, man, if I make it through this, this is going to be a hell of a story, you know? That's the whole reason we signed up for the SEAL team. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, every time my friends get, uh, for instance, every time I, our, my crew, we, we get together, all of us, at least twice, three times a year. Yeah. Two or three of us, four of us are together all the time, but usually because of what we do for a living and everything, it takes a – but anyways, so when we go out, a normal vacation for, for somebody, say, we went fishing. Like people will yeah. go down to the beach, you know, they get on the boat, they go out, get a lot of fish, come back, cook, have great. For us, we would get there, one of the cars would break down. And then when we were out, the boat would sink or break down, and we were out there 13 hours puttering back on, on one engine with a half a loaf of bread and no water, right? And then we get back in, there's no food left. And it's just every time we go out and one of these stories, these adventures, the next time we get around, we talk about it. Like, hey, man, you remember when that boat sunk on us? We had to swim back all the time, the hurricane. Up, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's just we laugh so hard at our misery that it becomes – a blessing to us. So if our bad times are a blessing, imagine how much fun we have during our good ones. And when you're running around with a crew and, and your friends and your family, that no matter what comes down that road, it's going to be a good time. 
good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. There, there is, there are, life is magnificent. I've had the greatest life every single day. Mm. I literally say out loud, like the greatest moment of my life, especially now. I, I can't even thank you guys for the life that y'all blessed me with. You got no idea. I can't even put it in the word. I don't have the vocabulary to explain one of my days. If I had to go through every ounce of pain I had to live through just to live the last three days, I, I would. And that's, it's like that for me every single day. And it's just because I never stayed down and I never got embarrassed when I got hurt or hit. I mean, think about it like this. Every time I go out, people tell me, thank you and good job for what I went through. But I, I got my, I mean, you know, I started that fight on the side of that mountain. I had everything I owned, all my gear and, and, and all my buddies at the end of it, three hours later, I was butt ass naked yeah, and I had my man. rifle left and all my friends were dead. They whipped my ass. So I was naked. I, you know, I don't know how many people have been through one of them, but it sucks. But people come up to me and tell me, good job and thank you. So can you see the conflict? So I never yeah. I never care what I think. Who cares what I think? I, you know, when everyone around me, my family, if they're saying good job, then I'm, shit, man, it must have been a good job. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, man. And I, I just never let myself, I never let anybody, no one can make fun of me and pick on me like I can. Right. And because of that, because I can laugh at myself harder than anybody else, I just, sure. whatever. And then over over time, I guess I wasn't the best. I just hung out with them. And I just got to go to, you know, walk with giants and got to experience all those adventures and go on some of myself. And because of some of the things that happened, transpired, you know, y'all heard about it. And then that's how this happened. So I get to share those stories what would normally be with my teammates and my friends, with all of y'all. That's why y'all are my family, because y'all, y'all live through some of the most horrible times together. You yeah. understand that. So when someone comes up and talks to me and knows this story about me, my most intimate, some of the most intimate details, then you, you're my family. I mean, the only family knows that crap. I, I literally, I don't have any secrets from y'all. I've failed in front of you my entire life. Man. And yeah. uh, I just, I never thought it was a, a curse. I never thought of it as a bad thing. I always thought of it as a blessing. Shit, man, you guys could have just thrown me away. But every sure. time I went out there, I know I got hurt, got hit. Y'all, y'all put me back together. And send me back out there to have some more fun, to make some more memories. And I just never took it back. I, you know, I never took that for granted, ever. Man. Because if you start focusing on yourself and what you want and how important you are, then you're missing the point. I live every one, everything I have in my house. I mean, I came from nothing. You, and what I have now all came from y'all. It just shows up here. Man. All because I put on a uniform. Well, you know, you're certainly giving back, you know, continuing to give. And I know maybe that, uh, you know, maybe you don't consider yourself a hero. Um, you know, we need heroes these days, Marcus. We need them. And, uh, you know, and maybe you're, maybe you're not a hero. Maybe you're a symbol of what one could be. But however you, you, know, you want to think about it, um, you know, you mean a lot to, to a lot of people. And your story has meant a lot to a lot of people. And, and, uh, and the work you're continuing to do means a lot to a lot of people. So, um you know, no, I, 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 that means more than you know. And look, it's because of it's because of that that I keep going up. I mean, I, that's that's the, that's kind of the rub with. It. The more y'all do for me, the more I want to do for you. That's that's mm, just the way it good. is. I mean, shirt off my back. I, I, once I make a friend, I'm kind of like a bad rash, man. You can't get rid of me. I, I, just, <laughs> I, I don't care what, whatever I can do. You Texans, you got some good sayings. We need we need more of that too. <laughs> <laughs> you always got to. You got a phrase for something. It's awesome. Oh yeah, man. A lot of them don't make sense, but if you listen to stuff, it'll it, it'll come back around and make sense. <laughs> Y'all make it sound good either way, so it's all right. Um, well, look, I, I don't want to keep you on here too long. Uh, I I really do appreciate just the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah, and, no, you uh, bet, man. I enjoyed it. Thank you. You know, I, I, the stuff that's, that's going on with the team never quit and the, and the podcast. I mean, just really, really impactful, really powerful stuff happening there. And, uh, and then the things that are going on with the Lone Survivor Foundation as well. Everybody go check that out. You can head over to wolfandiron.com slash Marcus Luttrell. And, uh, it doesn't matter how you spell it. You'll find <laughs> you're going to figure it out and, uh, it'll, it'll get you there and it'll, it'll link to all the stuff that Marcus has going on and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Well, sir, I, I really do appreciate you being on here and, uh, and appreciate everything that you're, that you're continuing to do. Um, I hope you go in and just enjoy your time with your family, that the new mission. And, uh, you bet, yeah. man. Same to you and, uh, to all your listeners. I appreciate you guys having me out. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I hope, uh, hope somebody took something away from it. If you did, man, I just wasn't here for you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to it again. If you didn't get anything. All right. All right. All right. Take care. All right, man. Thank you. 
Well, there you have it, men. I'd love to know what you thought about the episode. Feel free to reach out to me on any of my social media networks. And look, if you got something out of this, make sure another guy does too. Share the episode and make sure it gets in front of the guys that need to hear it the most. Until next time, keep your powder dry. And may a fair wind be always in your sails. <laughs>